All right, well, here we are in the uh, beautiful game that is Company of Heroes 2, and we have a match today, Sturm Tigers against Black Phoenix. And on the southern side of Rails and Metal, we will have Sturm Tiger G up and Sturm Tiger J playing as the Soviet and British combined front. And uh, plenty of interesting things coming out of this combination at the moment. Uh, game is just so well tuned for uh, British and Soviet uh, combined arms. You've got great power in the late game from the Brits, uh, beautiful early game from the Soviets. Uh, so it is going to be a challenge for the Axis teams. And in the north side, we've got OKW and the Austria playing uh, from. Uh, Gosh, look at this name. Cact Locio. We're going to call him Locio. And uh, Gecko. And it looks like the Axis players are going to go in with a very, very strong push on the right hand side fuel. Uh, both teams favouring to go for this position. They want to try to beat off the Allies in the early game uh, as much as possible. Looks like they're going to try to lock this sector down uh, and then progressively move on throughout the match. Look at this, no territory <laughs> at all connected at the start of the game. Both players rushing every single unit they have over here, trying to get the uh, the best best foothold they possibly can. Kubel and the MG gun are easily going to be able to deal uh, with this Construct Squad. No chance of Molotovs upgraded yet, so these guys really don't have a leg to stand off. MG gun suppressing both squads on that assault. Going to be able to push up the Engineers. They do actually deal a fair amount of damage to the Kubel though, who's forced to retreat out of that engagement. House does remain under control of the Allies. Plenty of stuff going on in the first two minutes of this game. So many engagements already. And you can tell what kind of game this is going to be straight away uh, from the first engagements that appear in here. Now this MG gun is going to turn its position to try and nail down these conscripts on the right hand side. And uh, look at this Sturm Pioneer squad. Very, very low health. Looks like uh, Locio didn't really spot that in time. He's got a very late retreat. Should be able to get out of there. All right, now. now let's have a look at the left-hand side. <laughs> Neither player really touched this at the start of the game. Both factions heavy on the right-hand side. Um, but here we go. Stuntiger J is going to make an attempt to capture that side. And we'll see how that engagement goes between him and the Volksgrenadiers in just a moment. Now, the Axis' main objective here is to get control of this house. And uh, let's see if we're going to see some kind of mortar come on the field soon. Uh, try and clear that out. At the moment, they don't really have any way of uh, negating units inside this building, other than perhaps rifle grenades or the incendiary grenades from the OKW. But we haven't seen that tier 1 truck go up yet. And um, they're not going to have access to those until that building goes up. So at the moment, very, very strong position for allies. They're putting a lot of pressure on the right-hand side. It should be pretty easy for them to capture the left-hand side. Engagement should be won by the British here, who gains slightly more health than the Volksgrenadiers, thanks to being in cover. Uh, and their cover bonus just allowed them to win that battle there. Kubel in very, very dangerous position here against the Vickers. Is he going to be able to get out in time? Looks like he just managed to get out of there. Very, very... Uh, weird decision to go in with the Kubel uh, against the Vickers. There was no way that he was going to really win that. Okay, looks like Axis now have finally managed to get control of this building. That's a very, very good position for them. They're going to have a lot of leverage over gaining this fuel position now. It's just something they desperately need uh, in order to secure um, a mid-game that is a kind of in line with the allied factions. Um, that, that one fuel is essential in making sure they're going to be able to match up uh, vehicle attack at the same rate as the allies. You don't want to be letting allies get double fuel on the, uh, on the start game. Causes a lot of problems later on. Here we go, Molotov's teched up from Giap, who nearly <laughs> runs into his own Molotov on the truck there. And we have some very, very deep pushing here by the stun penners on the right hand side. Looks like they're focusing on a VP uh, denial. They don't want to lose too many VPs against their opponent. I guess that's a good idea, actually, because um, that early VP drain that the Allies usually get makes it very, very difficult for Axis to actually do anything in the late game when they do have all the units that they need, uh, you know, that can help them push forward. So, you know, trying to nullify the VP drain that Allies put on uh, as early as possible can actually give 
good benefits uh, for the Axis. Who are going to be more focused, obviously, in the mid late game. You don't really want to be worrying about VPs in the late game as much as possible. Here we go, nice Molotov going in here. Is he paying attention to the Stern Pioneer squad? Looks like he is. He is going to be able to get out in time with a little bit of help from the Kubel here. Let's have a look if we've got. Uh, we don't have anti tank grenades tech up yet. So Kubel's in a pretty strong position at the moment. Oh, he's got a game like that. Lots of finally on the field now, helping to deal with this Vickers and also any units in the building. This building is very, very troublesome for the Axis if they do decide to double up on this side. And it looks like it's been set on fire, so they may not have to deal with it for too much longer. Or maybe another incendiary grenade or uh, flame burst if we have that from the Austria player, which we don't. Yeah, I should be able to ignite that building pretty quickly and get it out of the way. Team is Strong pushes all around from the allies. Doesn't look like the Axis have really managed to take control of the right hand side. I mean, there's only been a machine gun and a conscript squad here. They should have been able to deal with that by now. Um, you know, all the while the allies are getting a little bit stronger. We've got plenty of squads in the field right now. Let's have a look at this composition from Jay. Uh, simple, three rifles and engineers. And uh, doesn't look like anything's on the build order yet. Despite that he's got 6, 000, uh, sorry, 650 manpower and we haven't seen any of these units come out um, from the tier 2 yet. So very, very surprising to see this manpower float going on um, from... I mean, to be in Stern Tiger, what I assume is a high-ranking play. Here we go, hasn't spotted the incendiary as well. Could lose a lot of men to that. Look at the health that just went down on that. So obviously we're going to focus on this huge battle over here that's been going on. Nice defensive support tactic from uh, the Austere player, Gecko, who is uh, doubling up on his MGs. He's going to stop any of these conscript rushes coming in, make it as difficult as possible. We do have the LEIG out with the battle group from OKW, so we should be seeing a Jagdpanzer IV come out um, as one of the first vehicles in this game. Very, very good on this map, the Jagdpanzer IV, because uh, it's obviously going to get a lot of scope, a lot of range battles uh, on such open ground. I don't really know who's going to win this fight. I think the Sternfinders will still win because the uh, British engineers need a little bit more close range in order to uh, get that high DPS off. We'll see how that one pans out. Kubel not managing to find the suppression because of the green cover here. Sternfinders did retreat in the end, losing the uh, losing the extra squad number. Here we go. Finally, we're seeing a sniper and an AT gun being built. I had a feeling that Jay probably was being focused on his micro and a bunch of engagements there to build. Uh, the he, trained. He built both of those units and is still <laughs> floating 400 manpower. Definitely could have utilized uh, that unit advantage if he'd have built the sniper sooner. Damned enemies trying to take a point from us. The enemy caught our supply line. Alright, things seem to have uh, toned down for a minute. Still no commander selection, by the way. I think this is an important thing to uh, point out. Once I'm just going to turn this volume down. I don't know if this is loud for you guys as well. The speech volume is, is, is quite loud for me. So let's get knocked it down a bit. So yeah, I mean, notice that we haven't seen any commander choices yet. So it looks like no player has gone in with a preset, uh, a preset strategy. They're both trying to get a feel for each other, what the gameplay style is, uh, maybe look for some you know, units that may be easily countered by doctrine choices. So, yeah, interesting to see that because in a lot of tournament games you usually do get the player that will launch straight in with a commander. And I was expecting to see Scavenge Doctrine here, which is quite a popular OKW choice at the moment. Looks like the Kubel just went down there. Not sure what that went down to. Looks like it may have just taken uh, a large amount of health damage from those uh, infantry Tommies there. Maybe it was the sniper. I'm not sure. I didn't actually see that. Let's have a look. The sniper didn't actually get any kills. Here we go. Vehicles destroyed. So yeah, it was the uh, it was the infantry that gained a kill on the Kubel there. So it looks like uh, Losio had a bit of a moment there. 
taking uh, care of his squad. It's worth noting, by the way, Axis have a very, very good position uh, in this map right now. They've got both VPs, they're comfortably sitting on their munitions and fuel point. Allies aren't even really making an attempt for the uh, fuel point on the right-hand side, and at the same time, they've lost control of the fuel on the left-hand side, so Axis are actually going to get a pretty big boost into their mid-game, which Allies did not want to give them. One of the whole benefits of the... Um, one of the whole benefits uh, of the allies, you know, is that you do manage to tech up uh, quicker than your Axis counterpart. So giving you, giving the Axis double fuel, that's going to be costly uh, for the Sturm Tigers in this game. And uh, these guys, the Axis players, they're doing really, really well. Really, really impressed by this. I don't know who these players are. Um, I haven't really come across them before. I do know the Sturm Tiger clan. I know they're a very, very good clan. So uh, to see them not being able to dominate Axis like this. Uh, I'm very, very impressed by the Axis gameplay so far. This is really nice to see. Sniper trying to find some targets here. Looks like he hasn't quite got sight. There we go. Taking one of the shots off the Grenadines there. Oh! Oh! Look at that beautiful shot from the AIG there! It completely nullifies the health of that Sniper. It's so lucky to be alive though. He is definitely going to be thankful for that, but... That was perfect timing there. <laughs> Took a shot on the Grenadiers, instantly uh, instantly took a counter shot with the early AG. Absolutely beautiful. Now here we're seeing the uh, infrared half track come in, which is going to be providing them a little bit of reconnaissance as to where these snipers are. Maybe they're going to start barraging with the LEIG now, trying to take down some of those snipers with some RNG shots. Would be a good idea, constantly putting the pressure on. Um, it's also going to allow them to predict uh, enemy directions, floating them left to right with the hordes of infantry that they've got. And really these double MGs and the infantry that the OKW player has alone. Bear in mind we've got a very, very uh, heavy infantry build from Nex here as the Oster. So really they're not going to have any issue with dealing uh, with the allied build at the moment. For access to out manpower, the allies is quite unusual. So. I think they're going to enjoy a fairly easy mid-game at the moment. They have had a fuel advantage too. Let's have a look at what's going on here and there. SU-76 on the field at the moment. Looks like it took a Panzerfaust there from Nex, who's pushing up with the two Grenadiers, and he's in a very, very comfortable position to do so. A little bit of support with the Sniper from Jay, but here we go. The AT gun's coming in now, trying to find the target on the SU-76. Is he going to get that one shot off? Doesn't look like he's in the position to do so. We do have Commando Glider section coming in the battlefield here. Let's just have a look at this. This is uh, such a beautiful game. Always want to see that glider coming in. Where is it? Hovering above the battlefield. Nothing to contest it so far. Interested to see where this goes down. Okay, interesting positioning. Looks like it almost landed right in front of the machine gun there, which is quick to retreat. Instant capping at this point, but three Grenadier squads are going to come in. Doesn't look like the commander's really managed to get that close range. A gamma bomb goes down. Doesn't actually do any damage. And is he going to lose the squad? That is such a heavy, heavy loss if he loses that right now. So he's going to take one of these LMGs to connect. Oh, <laughs> looks like he manages to get it away. We do have the sniper chasing here. Is it going to get that one shot off? Oh, the sniper misses! Commandos do get away, and Jay is going to be so grateful for that, because that was just a weird decision to make. I don't know why he decided to do that. He didn't use it with any kind of concerted push whatsoever. He sent them straight in alone, uh, didn't pay off for him whatsoever. What a waste of manpower. And uh, this is just giving the Axis even more time, even more fuel to, uh, you know, like... Uh, <laughs> mental fuel, not actual fuel. They're not going to get actual fuel from that. <laughs> this is probably bad uh, terminology there, but it's giving them the mental fuel and the time fuel that they need to just constantly build and uh, match the tech of their opponents. So again, just great play from the Axis so far. They're not doing anything irrational. They've been so on top of the game. Everything's being healed when they go into engagements. Allies have just not been able to find themselves. We're seeing squads that haven't really got the health. We've got a squad wipe there from Jay. And Jay's just lost so many units. It looks like the Centaur's coming in here. And the Centaur will be a problem for the uh, Axis. And it doesn't look like they're really prepared for it on the right-hand side. Maybe we've got one AT gun only at the moment. Uh, no mines from what I've seen so far. And Centaur's going to come through and just rip through this. Nice barrage there from G-App. 
Look at this, so much going on at the moment. Here we go, a commander choice now. So we do have commander choices actually, obviously I should have said this before. Commander choice has been from three of the players now. So let's just talk about Losia who's gone in for the uh, Special Operations Doctrine. And here we see he's already gone for the uh, STG Orbital Dutton. Now, uh, you don't usually see STG Orbital Dutton on long range maps. That's obviously because they're... Uh, weapon profiles here are more suited to closer range, uh, medium to close range engagements rather than uh, the um, you know, long range benefits for the LMG-34. So we would normally expect to see the LMG-34 there, maybe we'll find out why he's done that. It could possibly have something to do with the green cover here uh, and obviously his allies are going to be very very built up here and the STG-44s do negate the bonus cover effects so we'll see, we'll see what happens there. Let's just follow the centaur for a second. Which is going to uh, put a little bit of pressure on these Orbital Dutton right now. Looks like uh, Losio managed to spot that though. Mid engagements again, just bouncing the allies around constantly. A lot of infantry going in and out of engagements. Making sure that that uh, sorry, VP is always capped. Look how deep the centaur's gone in on the back lines. And are they prepared for the flank? It doesn't look like they are at all. Um, I see a Rakettenwerfer and 1AT gun at the moment. This this Centaur, if it comes in on the flank, could cause some real havoc. Uh, you know, with a good push from the Allies. It doesn't look like they're going for it though. Woo! We're getting a, a bit of a down moment now. Um, so yeah, let's have a talk about the other commander choices. We have the... Uh, Soviet industry tactics go in. Are we going to see the KV-2 in this game? I hope so, but I highly expect that the KV-8 is going to be the first unit of choice uh, for GAP here. Obviously, it's a very, very strong unit at the moment. The, um, the, the flames in this game are a little bit broken, so uh, obviously things like the KV-8 uh, are just going to be everybody's go-to choice. Uh, so I would expect that to come in first. The Soviet is going to be boosting the fuel income uh, quite a lot, but obviously look at the look at the manpower income now. Uh, it's right down to 141 per minute, and we haven't got that much infantry from GAP on the field already. So I'm just wondering, did he really take advantage uh, of the kind of manpower income he had at the start of the game? Should he have built an extra squad, anticipating that he's going to be suffering from this manpower loss? Personally, I would say yes. Um, I don't really know if three conscripts and a machine gun is going to cut it in terms of uh, providing support for these vehicles. Let's find out. Uh, in the meantime, we do have two SC-76s out with a T-70. Obviously, T-70 providing sight right now uh, with the ability there. So, let's get out and watch this engagement properly. Now notice we've got two uh, infantry support guns up here and they're just constantly keeping control of the center VP. Every time infantry walks in there, two of the IGs are just very, very quick to uh, nail that down. And there's so many barrage shots going on here. We've got the LEIG providing barrage, SU-76 is providing barrage. Uh, all sorts of things going on here. Uh, look at this, even the AT guns providing some kind of barrage. Um, plenty of short range artillery going on all across the map just trying to weaken the front lines, so hopefully we're going to see uh, some decent medium tank rushes a bit later on. Now actually looking back at this engagement here, maybe this is the reason uh, reason why we've seen the STG Orbital Dutton come up, is probably to counter the British commandos. Uh, now normally the British commandos would be able to quite comfortably engage um, the Orbital Dutton in close range, they can even run around the LNG and, and, and kind of stop it from actually doing anything. So probably that's the reason why we're seeing the um, quad STGs here is to deal with those commandos and I actually uh, think that's probably a good idea. In the late game we're going to be able to see the Command Panther uh, which is of course very very good. Um, you can get the mark target on that and it reduces, I think it's like 50% damage um, damage bonus when that ability is on. So they're going to be able to deal with late game armor quite comfortably with the support of the Command Panther. Obviously with all the late game benefits that brings as well. And again here we're going to see STGs just ripping through the green cover bonuses for the Brits there. Doing a really really good job of that. Uh, completely uncontested there. Centaur hasn't really managed to find anything so far. Just look at this cluster of axes. <laughs> There's a big engagement going on there. 
I mean, just look at the look at the builds at the moment from these uh, Axis players. They really are favouring, um, you know, a mass army approach. They're just planning to overwhelm the opponents, and I don't really think that Jay has provided the infantry uh, infantry sized army that is needed for his opponent to go, you know, so heavy on vehicles. Panzerwerfer in dealing some damage on the AT gun there. Nice uh, retreat point put up by Jay here. That's going to be able to give him a bit more of a, a solid foothold on this side of the map. But again, it's just they're struggling so hard to get anything in the middle of the map right now. And it's just so well defended by the Axis. They did such a good job of uh, claiming both sides of the map. And it's going to be a real struggle right now for uh, for the Allies to get back on this now. We do have a couple of abilities, obviously, for the allies that are going to be able to neutralize this area. Probably some controversial ones, uh, including air supremacy, which we are slowly getting towards right now. Stemtiger J hasn't really spent much of his munitions in this game. When we unlock 12 CP, uh, they are going to use air supremacy here, and it is going to wipe an incredible amount, uh, assuming they don't move it out of the way. So, I mean, it looks like at the moment allies are just holding out again, you know, Stuntiga G up, barraging everything he can whenever he can, just trying to really, really, you know, hamper the manpower of the Axis, maybe take out some AT guns. But um, this is just a waiting game at the moment. And also, you know, Jay is just throwing units into the melee in order to try and get CPs up. But he needs to be careful, he's lost a couple of squads already. Here we go, Obersoldat ripping in through the middle. Jay once again hasn't noticed. We see LEIG wiping the squad there. Jay is losing everything. He's been reduced so many times. His manpower, even though Brits already get an income that is slow. And oh, the LEIG nearly takes another squad out. It's incredible. We've got the two snipers here. I feel like they could be doing more, but they're clearly so terrified of this LEIG, which has already had some pretty accurate hits on them. Again, look at this barrage clearly on the uh, reinforce point here. Are we going to see the KV-8 come in from GEP? I don't know. GEP appears to have stopped building vehicles right now, which suggests maybe, you know, we are going to see KV-8, but... Uh, sorry, KV-2. But I don't see any reason why a KV-8 hasn't hit the battlefield right now. It would be the perfect complement to go around with the Centaur uh, and the SU-76s. And here we go, Centaur finally making that rush, and they do manage to take the infrared half-track down. That's going to be pretty good for them, because it means that their snipers now get a little bit of more uh, leeway in, in kiting in and out to deal with the infantry here. Maybe they can get some better pot shots now without the LEIG harassing them. Again, desperately trying to cap this mid vp They haven't got it. Air Supremacy now unlocked. Where's this firing? Not really sure what the Panzerwerfer was aiming at there. <coughs> Command Panther also now on the field, so time is running out for the Allies. I don't know what they're doing. Allies are being very, very passive. I mean, we're seeing a lot more aggression from the Oster than we are Giap. And this is surprising. Giap is a very, very good player. Um, and it looks like he really has no idea what to do with himself right now. Um, these things have been sitting here not doing anything for ages. They, they need to be getting involved in engagements. So you're now at a point where Axis are actually pushing up the map quite confidently. Uh, they really haven't been losing any squads whatsoever. There hasn't been any engagements that have gone in favor of Jay, that's for sure so far. Um, here we go, we're just finally a machine gun crew went down there for the Oster. Absolutely nothing. We're still not seeing air supremacy either being called down. Very, very interesting. What's this that just come in here? The Comet tank from Jay. I think that's a good choice actually. I think they definitely need uh, this vehicle on the field right now to help uh, to help with the push. But where is the KV-2? What's that? <laughs> the SU-76 is just going down. 
I mean, look at the positioning of this. We've got an unprotected AT gun from the Ostair just pummeling so deep into allied territory and there's just nothing that GF can do about it. He hasn't got the manpower to keep reinforcing his own squads in order to protect them. Uh, and the units themselves just aren't even strong enough to push up uh, on the map. You know, GF is just in a, po a position where Jay is having to, you know, try and hold everything until this KV-2 gets on the field. And here we go, KV-2 has finally entered the battlefield. Uh, we're going to do a bit of army zooming here. And uh, look at that. Oh, oh, he's using the uh, the Roman skins here with his blood splatter. I mean, this unit's pretty slow. I don't think I don't think this unit is capable of running over units to create that kind of blood splatter. If I'm honest, because you'd have to be a moron to be crushed by this thing. <laughs> well, as I say that, these guys almost get crushed. So uh, <laughs> maybe I take that back. Here we go. Now he's just set up in range of the AT gun. Both AT guns are going to be launching straight in on this. Straight away with the stun shot, beautiful use of this ability here. Uh, using the stun shot in the KV, it's now not able to fire. Grenadiers are going in, they're going to try and get the Faust off. Look, straight down to half health, he had to cancel that. And are we going to see the Faust? Yes, we do see the Faust! AT gun is probably going to chase this down straight away. What a terrible entry for this unit. Here we go, more Faust coming in. Are they going to try and take this down with Grenadier Faust? I have no idea how this is going to pan out. Comet tank been incredibly damaged by the Panther that's coming in here now. Two AT guns moving in, trying to deal with this. Uh, it's, what a terrible entry for this unit. It went in with no support. I have no idea what GF is doing right now. T70 is going to get crushed uh, by the pack guns. <laughs> pack guns drive into the Molotovs. Uh, it's a bit messy. Uh, they could have planned that well. I'm not sure why this Panther is not giving chase. Maybe they feel that there's some mines there, but. What are the Sturm Tigers doing in this game? They are they have thrown this game completely. Um, and here we go, elephants in the field now. I don't know, you know both the axis has just completely countered everything that the Sturm Tigers thrown at them. Um, you know, they, they don't have the commander advantage, they don't have the manpower advantage, they don't have the build advantage, they don't even have the VP or the map advantage. This this game is over, uh, as far as I'm concerned. We're going to see how it pans out. I don't think there's that much long in it, to be honest. Such beautiful play by these guys. I mean, I don't even know who uh, Black Phoenix is as a team. I have never heard of this clan. Uh, I know Gecko is a player. I, I don't know Locio, but these guys have played incredibly. They've just played. Uh, they've played textbook game all the way through. Absolutely beautiful first game, and uh, gee up. Maybe these guys got cocky. Maybe these guys had a build that they thought uh, they were going to win with that didn't quite pan out for them. But uh, look at this, Panzerwerfer base raping now. This is just becoming uh, abusive. But uh, may maybe uh, maybe Sturmtiger went into this game and underestimated them, I don't know. Uh, maybe in, in game two we're going to see a completely different play from these guys, and, and I sure do hope so. <laughs> what was the point of this? I don't know. I mean... Again, these guys must have given up. That can't be serious. It cannot be serious. Air Supremacy is going in on the mid. Let's have a look what kind of damage this does. Reasonably effective, actually. I mean, this is what we needed to see earlier on in the game when we had the Comet and the KV-2. We needed to see Air Supremacy used. We needed to see the Comet going in with the support of the KV-2. We needed to see the Snipers going in uh, by the KV-2 in order to take out any of the AT guns that were threatening it. And again, you know, this kind of synergy with Sturm Tigers just wasn't in this game so far. And here we go. GG has been called. Uh, great first game. Well played uh, to Black Phoenix here. Um... So yep, there we go, playback is over.